Welcome to part 3 of my Unity sound design series where I'm adding audio to this asset, the Sun Temple. In this part I'm adding footstep sounds that will change depending on what surface you're walking on. If you haven't seen parts 1 and 2 in this series, don't worry, as most of what I'm going to show you in this video can be used in any project. Especially if you're working with a game that's mostly complete, or if you're working with other assets like I am here, this video is a great example of how to build an effective footstep system that detects different materials without having to do a lot of extra work. First off, I need to decide exactly what I want the footstep system to do. I want footsteps that only play when the player is actually grounded and is walking around. I want the sounds to roughly match the speed of the player's movement. I want them to be randomly triggered with no repeats. I don't want to hear the same sound twice. Finally, I want footsteps that change depending on what you're walking on. In Unity there are several methods for working out what you're standing on, but probably one of the most straightforward options is to use a game object tag and then fire a raycast from the player to the object to retrieve the tag of whatever it is you're standing on. And in many cases this works fine, however, in this project using only that method would cause a couple of problems. One, this scene is already made, I'd have to work through all the objects in the scene to tag them correctly. Two, the majority of the walkable surface in this scene is one large object, a terrain object, which only has one assignable tag. Luckily, there's a simple solution. The vast majority of all the walkable surfaces in the Sun Temple environment are covered by only three different materials. Stone, dirt or grass, and wooden floors. So instead of tagging and checking every single material type, it's possible to get really good results by just checking two conditions. One, is the player on the terrain? Since it covers most of the walkable area, the player is most likely to be walking on terrain. I'm going to check if the player is standing on terrain with the method I just mentioned, by firing a raycast down to check for a terrain tag. 2. Is the player inside a building? All of the buildings in the area have wooden floors, and you may remember from my last video that they each have trigger colliders already set up inside them, making it easy to check if a player is indoors or not. If they are inside, then I know that they must be standing on a wooden floor. Finally, for everything else, if they're not standing on terrain and if they're not inside a building, then the player is most likely on one of the many prefabricated objects in the scene. And while you could use tags to assign materials to each of them individually, there is a much quicker method. All of the outside surfaces that aren't part of the terrain are made of materials like stone, tile and slate. So in this case, it'll be much, much more straightforward to assume that the player is always standing on stone and to only make checks to see if they're not. If later on I decide that I want different sounds for a different material on one of the prefabs, or if I find an object that doesn't work well with stone footsteps, it'll be easy to create an exception to this rule later on. But for now, by keeping it simple, it's possible to create an effective system without doing more work than is necessary. Before I check what the player is standing on, I need to know that they are actually standing on something. Uh, so I need to check that the player is grounded. And that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to select the FPS controller and add a new script called check if grounded and open that up. So I'm going to add some variables. I need a public collider variable, which I'm going to call player collider. And then I need some Boolean variables to hold the different states. So public bool is grounded. I'm just going to copy and paste this to make it easier. I need another one for is on terrain. And another one is inside. Okay. Uh, I also need a raycast hit variable, which is going to store the data I get from the raycast that I'm going to fire to check to see if the player is grounded or not, and also to see if they're on the terrain. So I can get rid of start, because I don't need start, and I'm going to start writing functions. So I'm going to check to see if the player is grounded. I'm going to create a boolean function called player grounded, and this is going to return true or false depending on whether or not they are grounded. So what I'm going to do is fire a raycast down from the player controller to see if there is a collider underneath them. Um, and if there is, 
they're on the ground. If they're not, they're probably not. Uh, so I'm going to return physics dot raycast and the overload method I'm going to use for this um, starts with the origin, then takes the direction, then puts the information from anything that's hit into a raycast hit variable, which is what this is for, and then a max distance. So for the origin, transform dot position, set the current position. Uh, the direction the vector three dot down. I'm going to type out hit to store the data, and lastly for the max distance, I'm going to take the player collider dot bounds dot extents dot y plus zero point five. So that's going to be zero point five beyond the y extent of the collider. So just a little bit extra to account for things like steps, stuff like that. Next, I want to check if the player is on the terrain. So I'm going to type bool, check on terrain. So it's another bool function. I'm going to type if hit dot collider is not equal to null and hit dot collider dot tag is equal to we're going to use terrain as the tag then return true else we're not on the terrain so return false finally I'm going to check if the player is inside now, if you watched my previous video on this, you'll remember that there are trigger colliders already set up on the inside areas uh, using a script called Exposure Manager. And we set up a system where it would just count up how many of those, those volumes you were in. And then if it was over zero, you must be inside. So we're just going to reuse that. If you haven't been following these videos and you're doing something different, well, then you can just add your own collider uh, and use the on trigger enter exit events or some sort of similar system with counters to check to see if it's inside or not. So all I'm going to do is type if sun temple dot exposure manager dot instance dot zone counter is greater than zero then return true Oops. else return false. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add all of those into update. So I'm going to set the is grounded boolean to whatever the result of player grounded the function is, the player grounded function. And I'm going to do the same for the others. Is on terrain is equal to check on terrain. Made a mistake there, missed the parentheses. And then is inside is equal to check if inside and then save that. So back in Unity, I just now need to drag the FPS controller onto the player collider variable. And what I also need to do is I need to select the terrain object. I'm just gonna select the path because I know it's terrain and then give it a tag. There is no terrain tag, so I'm just gonna add one. Terrain. Save, go back to the object, tag it as terrain. Now that I've set up the basic conditions, I now need to know what material the player is standing on, starting with when they're standing on terrain. Uh, a terrain object is just a large array of height and texture values, uh, which you can paint on like this and change what they are. These textures are stored in alpha maps or splat maps. There's one for each texture. And basically, it just stores the information down to this pixel level. You can see if I go right down to one pixel about what texture is where. And what we're going to do is translate the player position to a position on this splat map 
and check to see what textures are there. So I'm back on the FPS controller. I'm going to add a new script called check terrain texture. And open it up. I'm going to start by creating a couple of variables. So I need a public transform for the player. I need a public terrain object for the terrain object. And then I need two int variables, one position x, pos x, I'm going to call it, and public int pos c, position c. And finally, I need a array of floats which I'm going to use to store the texture values when I get them. First thing I'm going to do is in start, I'm going to assign the terrain object to terrain dot active terrain, and I'm going to assign the player transform to the transform on this game object. No, oh, I've made a mistake. There we go. Next, I'm going to get rid of update because I don't need that. I'm going to create a new function called update position. So what I'm going to do is subtract the terrain position from the player position, which will remove the offset and give me a world position over the terrain object. What I'm then going to do is take that new terrain position and divide it by the width and height of the terrain object, again in world space in units. What I'll have essentially is an X and Z coordinates as a percentage across the terrain object. So say if I was standing in the exact center of the terrain, my X and Z coordinates uh, would be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. I can use that modifier and multiply the width and height of the alpha map, which will be a total number of those pixel cells, by that modifier, which will give me a close enough coordinate on the x and z axes. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to declare a vector three variable called terrain position, and set this as player transform dot position minus the terrain object position. That will give me the position over the terrain object in world space. Then I'm going to declare, declare another vector 3 called map position. And this will be a new vector 3 and then I'm going to input each of the x, y, and z variables for this vector 3. So I'm going to take the terrain position that I've just set, the x axis, and divide it by the terrain object dot terrain data, which is where data about the terrain is stored, dot size, and this is size in units, dot x. So that's for the the x-axis. I don't need to do anything for the y-axis because I'm not dealing with the height. Uh, and then I need to do the same thing for the z-axis. So terrain position dot z divided by terrain object dot terrain data dot size dot z. Then close parentheses and end that statement. I'm going to declare a new float, which will be the x coordinate. I'm going to set that to the map position dot x. So that's the percent multiplier, and times it by terrain object terrain data dot alpha map width. And then I'm going to do the same thing 
on the z-axis z coordinate equals map position dot z times terrain objects dot terrain data dot alpha map height this time I'm going to set my main variables position x and position z and this is what will define where I am on this flat map to those values so position x equals I'm going to cast it as an int x coordinate I'm going to do the same on the z and what that does is translate my world position into an alpha map position that I can use to retrieve texture values now that I've got the data to feed into a function to check for textures, I now need to write that function. So I'm going to create a new function called check texture. I'm going to declare a float array that's a 3D array like this and call it splat map. And I'm going to set that to terrain object terrain data dot get alpha maps and then I'm going to pass in position X position Z and the sample size is going to be one and one and then For each of the texture values in my array up here, I'm going to set them to the splat map data that's been retrieved. Now the values that this array takes, the first two are an offset, and then the last one is the texture. So there are, there are four textures on this terrain, so we're going to do this four times. And for each one, because I just want to, I've already retrieved the data from the position I need it to be. I don't need to pass in any different data here. So I'm just gonna set them to zero, zero each time. And then the third value every time is going to be the index of the texture I want to update. So I'm just gonna copy this out. Oh, I've missed that. There we go. Just gonna copy this out another three times. And change that to one that to two, that to three, that to one, that to two, that to three. And that will update each of these textures with texture values. Ah, I've made one mistake there. That needs to be position, transform position, not get position. Lastly, I need to add a public void function called get terrain texture in there I'm just going to put update position and check texture and the reason I'm not putting this in update is because I don't want this to run all the time I don't need to do this until there is a footstep to be played if the player is on terrain uh, what I am going to do just to test is I'm going to run this in update and see if everything's working correctly. So I'm just going to call get terrain texture in update and save. So I'm back in Unity and I just need to change the size of the texture values array to four to hold a different piece of data. And then I'm going to play and test. And what you should see is these should be a value of zero to one depending on which texture. I'm standing on at any given moment. So you can see that texture three or element two in the array is, is dirt. And as I move onto the path, it switches to element zero, which is pavement. So I'm just going to go back into that script and take out update because like I said, I don't want this to be calling all the time. I don't need it to. So I'm going to take that out and save. 
So I now have everything I need to detect what material the player is standing on. I now need to trigger footsteps when the player walks around and in time with their movements and speed. I'm going to add an audio source to the FPS controller. I'm going to disable play on awake and I'm going to keep this as 2D because the samples I have are stereo. So I'm just going to, I've got a folder of footstep sounds here, which I'm going to leave a link to in the description if you want to download them and do this for yourself. I'm just going to drag that whole folder into the audio folder in the project. Back on the FPS controller, I'm going to add a new script called footsteps and open that up. So I need to create some variables, starting with a public reference to check if grounded. I'm just going to call that check if grounded and a public reference to check terrain texture. And I need an audio source. And now I'm going to create three audio clip arrays. Like that. And I'm going to call these stone clips. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to copy that, paste. Dirt clips. And wood clips. Audio clip variable called previous clip. Then I need a character controller called character. And then I need some information about the player. So I want a float for the current speed. I want a bull for whether or not they're walking. Another float for distance covered. And a public float called modifier. I'm going to initialize that at 0 0.5 and then finally I'm going to add a float called airtime. Right so before I do anything else in start I'm going to set the character as game object dot get component character controller and now I'm going to start adding functions. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the player's speed. So I'm going to create a float function. So this will return a float. Call it get player speed. I'm going to declare a new variable called speed and set it to the character dot velocity dot magnitude and then I'm just going to return speed so then in update I'm going to set the current speed equal to the result of get player speed and what this does is it returns the speed of the player in units per second the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if the player is actually walking or not. Uh, so I'm going to create a boolean function called check if walking. And in there I'm going to type if current speed is greater than zero and check if grounded is grounded, so if the player is grounded, then return true. So if they're moving faster than zero and they're grounded, then they are walking. Else, if those things are not true, they're not walking, return false. I'm just going to add that to update as well. So in update, I'm going to set walking equal to the result of check if walking. Next I'm going to write a function to retrieve a clip 
from any of the arrays of audio clips that I've set up. So this is going to be an audio clip function called get clip from array. And this is going to take a parameter of an audio clip array. The reason I'm doing it like this is so I can pass in a different array and it can get a different random clip, whether it's the stone clips, the wood clips, or the dirt clips. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to select a random clip from the array and check it against the last clip that was played. And if it's the same, try and get a different clip so that there aren't any repeats. But I don't want it to try and do that forever in case, for example, it can't do it, say if there's only one clip in the array for some reason, or if just by chance it keeps selecting the same one, I do want it to eventually just give up. It's not that important. So I'm going to declare an int variable attempt equals three. So I'm going to limit this to three tries of trying to get a different clip. Then I'm going to declare an audio clip called selected clip. And I'm going to set this to something random from the array. So clip array random dot range between zero and clip array dot length minus one to stop it overshooting. So while selected clip is equal to previous clip and attempts is greater than zero, pick a different clip. So we're basically just going to run this line again a second time, do it again, basically. And then if it's not the same as the previous clip, well, it's just going to bypass this anyway, because it will never be true. And then each time it does that, the D increment attempts. Then after all that, set the previous clip to the selected clip and return selected clip. Next, this is just going to be a void function called trigger next clip. And the first thing I'm going to do in here is I'm going to add some randomization. So I'm going to set the audio source of pitch to something random between 0 0.9 and 1.1. And I'm going to do the same thing for the volume. So I'm going to change pitch to volume because this is quicker. I'm going to change it from something between 0 0.8 and 1 one is the maximum. And now I'm going to start working through the conditions. So if check if grounded is on terrain, then check terrain texture dot get terrain texture. So this is the function we wrote to get the texture they're standing on. So now I'm going to start working through the textures. So if check terrain texture dot texture values zero for the first texture is greater than zero. So if the texture mix of the point they're standing on is greater than zero, then audio source dot play one shot get clip from array stone clips is the array we're going to pass in because there are four textures on the terrain object and the first one is stone and the others are a mix of grass dirt that sort of thing and then the second parameter to pass into play one shot is a volume scale and what I'm going to do instead of just doing one is I'm going to pass in the texture values mix so what I'm doing here is instead of just playing it at full volume I'm passing in the texture mix as the volume parameter so you get a representative amount of that clip come through 
um, based on, on how much of that texture you're standing on. So I'm just going to do this for each of the textures in the array. So for the next one, I'm going to paste the whole function again, change the texture index to one, and again there as well, and then change stone clips to dirt clips. I do this another two times for the other two textures remaining. I'm just going to change this index to two and then to three for the last one. Again, for the texture mix to two and three. So that's what's going to happen if they're standing on terrain. If they are not standing on terrain, so else if check if grounded is inside, then we're going to play back wood clips. So audio source dot play one shot, get clip from array. We're going to pass in the wood clips array. I'm just going to play it at one volume. Lastly, if they're not on the train, if they're not inside, then they must be on stone. So else for everything else, Going to copy this, paste, and change the array to stone clips. The last function I'm going to write is a small function just to play a footstep if the player has fallen off of something and then hits the ground. The player can't actually jump in this game, however, there are ledges they can walk off of, and then I want to have some sort of feedback, so I'm just going to keep track of that, and if they fall past a certain distance, I'm going to trigger a footstep sound based on what they've fallen on to. So I'm going to create a new function called void play sound if falling type if exclamation mark check if grounded dot is grounded so if they are not grounded then they must be in the air. I'm going to increment the airtime variable that we set up earlier by time dot delta time else if airtime is greater than 0 0.25 seconds then trigger next clip and reset the airtime to zero I'm going to see you call that from update so I'm going to go back up to update and type play sound if falling. So now that everything's set up I'm going to trigger clips uh, in time with the player's speed and movement. So I'm going to do that in update. So if walking distance covered I'm going to increment that by the current speed times time dot delta time and what that's going to do is it's going to convert the current speed back from units per second into units per frame and multiply that by my modifier. Then if the distance covered is greater than one unit, I'm going to trigger a footstep. So trigger next clip and reset distance covered back to zero and save. So I'm now going to go back into Unity, connect everything up and see if it works. So I need to drag my check if grounded script into the reference field, my check terrain texture script into there as well, and the audio source. Then I need to add my clips. So to do this, I'm just going to lock the inspector, find my footsteps and just drag these in. So stone, wood, and for the dirt, I've got some grass footsteps. Then I can unlock the inspector again. I'm also going to create a new audio mixer called player mixer. And on the main mixer, I'm going to create a group called player audio. And I'm going to drag the player mixer to the main audio mixer. And then when I'm prompted, route it to the player audio group. Then on the player mixer, I'm just going to add a new group called footsteps. 
and then back on the FPS controller, back on the audio source, I'm going to route the audio source to the footsteps group. Now this is probably a bit overkill for this particular situation. Uh, however, in a project where I, the, the player might be making other sounds as well, I'd probably want to have this, this level of control over the footsteps, other sounds, etc. So although it's not entirely necessary that I break it down in this way for this project, it's good practice to do it in this way and have some sort of control over your individual channels. So one thing I am just going to do, I'm going to reduce the sound of the footsteps down because I know that they'll be too loud at this level. And I'm going to make sure to do this on the player mixer, not this main audio mixer, which, as you may remember, has different snapshots set up on it. I'm just going to reduce it down to minus 12. And now I'm going to test and see if this works. So I'm getting grass footsteps on the grass, stone footsteps on the pavement, stone footsteps on this prefab. If I hurl myself off, we get a grass footstep on our land. And what I really like about using this method is that throughout most of this scene, there's this nice blending of dirt and sand and pavement. And this system will actually just mix footsteps together to accommodate that. And then if I move inside a building, I get wooden footsteps. So there you have it, a basic Unity footstep system that works on terrain and that doesn't require a ton of tags to work effectively. If you've got a suggestion for improving this method, or if you use a different system for your own game, please leave a comment below because I know it will be helpful to people watching this video that might be trying to adapt this to their own project. Finally, if you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, leave me a comment, click like or consider subscribing to my channel. In the next video I'll be adding some finishing touches to the scene such as reverb to the indoor areas. Thanks for watching.